Hello friends, welcome back. Last time we had seen what is a signal. This time we are going to see what are the types of signal. Signals can be classified depending upon various parameters. For example, a signal can be a continuous time or a discrete type signal. Depending upon its periodicity, uh, it can be periodic signal or a non-periodic signal. Yeah, the signal can be deterministic or random signal or either we can represent a signal in energy or that equation can be in the power. So it can be distinguished as energy signal or a power signal. We are not uh, basically focused on this energy and power signal. We will see that what is the continuous time and discrete time. We will see the continuous time or a discrete time signal in detail. Before that, we will go through what is a periodic signal and what is non-periodic signal and then we will go what is a deterministic signal and what is a random signal. Now, we had actually seen last time that the example of pendulum, right? In that, we got a sine wave like this. And this part was repeating again and again there this was a time period a signal which repeats itself after time period of t is known as the periodic signal a periodic signal will always have a time period there is a vice versa relationship if you consider a non periodic signal or a periodic signal there will not be repetition of like this okay something like this will be there like this like this and so on. so we cannot say that the particular part of the signal is repeating again and again and therefore it is non periodic signal. so this is periodic and non periodic now what is deterministic or a random signal we can classify a signal either a deterministic signal or a random signal when we can uh, write or we can know the pattern of the signal then it is called as deterministic signal very famous example of that is this sine wave so the pattern of this is known we can represent this in a mathematical equation similarly if a signal is something like this it is exponential signal a signal can be something like this it is decaying signal we can write the mathematical equations for this signal and therefore these are deterministic signals we can determine what kind of path this signal is going to follow. In SS, you might have seen the RAM signal. We know the pat pattern of this signal. You might have observed, you might have seen the exponential signal. Okay. So, like this, it is increasing. So, it is going like this. So, it is exponential. The pattern of these signals are known. How they are going to behave is known. It, their behavior is known then. Therefore, this is deterministic. We can determine the behavior of this signal and therefore it is deterministic signal. Exponential signal cannot do like this. Right? It will not come back to zero. The determinist uh, always exponential signal is going to follow this part. Whereas in the random signal, the pattern of the signal cannot be predicted. The very famous example of this is noise. It will be something like this. So we cannot write any equation. No equation can be, no mathematical equation can be written for this. And therefore, this is the random signal. 
and therefore many of the times you might have heard the term as random noise we cannot determine its pattern of signal we cannot determine that very interesting point is that the this random signal is not at all and cannot be a periodic signal it cannot be a periodic signal and also the periodic signal cannot be a, a random signal now we will see what is the meaning of continuous time you had seen this waveform many times in your first year second year and this is known as a continuous time signal when we learn the pendulum at that time we had drawn the this sign wave on this waveform on x axis we write t okay on y axis we can write we might write voltage current and so on. when we saw the example of pendulum when we plotted the moment of this pendulum we seen that it is a sine wave right now on the x axis of sine wave we had written time and on y axis we generally write the voltage or current or any other term but it is always plotted with respect to time and keep in mind a time is a continuous it does not happen that say 9 am it is here and say at 10 am it goes over here it does not happen like that it continuously in time goes over here and come back over here and it goes over here there is no break in this time so what problem happens is that with this sine wave is that it is continuous there are n number of points on this sine wave it can be in the seconds milliseconds microseconds nanoseconds and we can go into the micro level of this of time and it will go on this will go on so we can record in fact the infinite number of the points in this signal what is the problem if i have to save this this waveform what will happen suppose it is microsecond so it is 10 raised to minus 6 now if the time period of this is 1 second okay and if i to convert this it can every point in the digital system suppose i am using 8 bit then i will required 8 into 10 raised to 6 bits to store only one cycle of the waveform only one cycle of the waveform and this is very high data it is not possible for us to save each and every point of this waveform and therefore we generally might have observed that we do not record or store the analog signal it is not possible so what is the way out from this you have seen this what is the way out it is sampling sampling was introduced to you in analog communication what exactly we do in the sampling so if this is the sine wave it is t and this is say voltage so what we do is that instead of taking n number of points we decide that from this part of the waveform we will take only 
say this point so it will be something like this like this like this okay i can take the some points of this and this is known as sampling so instead of taking all the points we are taken the few points a sample points of this signal which will represent this whole signal if i join this point like this this point this signal will resemble to this original waveform now it is not in continuous time okay it is not in continuous time it is it is in in parts we know the word english word discrete what is meaning of discrete is that it is separate from each other here you can see that these points are connected to each other it is like a wave in ocean every particle of that wave is connected to each other and it can be seen over here whereas here those are detached from each other these those are apart from each other those are discrete from each other right but it is still it is in time so on the x axis it is time and therefore this is known as discrete time scene now here the representation of this signal changes why because time is continuous and instead of having this continuous waveform what we did is that we have taken the some points and we represent we can represent the, them into the numbers say this is first sample this is second sample third fourth and so on we can represent these samples in number therefore from x axis instead of writing t we start writing n but still it is a time signal it is time signal x axis is not changing the domain which we have seen it is not changing a domain it is not going into special domain neither it is going into the frequency domain it is still in the time domain and therefore we distinguish this two waveform as this is continuous in time so we write as continuous time signal and this as a discrete time signal so instead of having infinite number we had taken the samples we can number these samples and therefore instead of t we started writing as n now keep in mind it is very interesting that these values on y axis are not discretized we are discretized on x axis in time but we not discretized on y axis so this value can be 1.1 this value can be say 2. say 34 this value can be say 3.87 and so on and it can be in micro level also so instead of 87 it can be 3.8675 and so on so we have one discretized on the y axis we have seen this how to discretize it on the y axis and we call that as quantization 
call that as quantization. That part we will come in the latter part when we will see the digital thing. So how we represent a sine wave like this. This is in continuous time. So it is continuous time signal. It is discretized on x-axis which is x-axis is a time and therefore it is discrete time signal. And keep in mind we haven't discretized on y-axis. How we represent this signal? As x of n is equal to and this points we write. For each number this is 0th sample. This is first sample. This is second sample. And we write like for 0 sample say 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 and so on. On the negative side of this then we write like this. This is a representation of discrete time signal. Now what is a digital signal? Many people get confused when we say a discrete time and they relate this discrete time as a digital signal. Keep in mind we are in a time domain. We haven't went to the digital systems. Why I'm saying so? Because when I write a signal like this, okay, this is in continuous time. When we when I convert this like this, and so on. Here I write, suppose this is 5. I write here as say 0. Here I uh, consider that as 2.5. Here I will write as 5. Here again say 2.5, 0, minus 2.5, 0, minus 2.5 and 0. Now keep in mind these values are not in digital format because in the digital format we represent signals in ones and zeros. How to convert this into ones and zeros? We know that uh, an encoder convert this into the digital numbers. So this number will be represented in ones and zeros. Once it is represented in ones and the zeros, then only it will be a digital signal. Now that process is not easy. Why? Because suppose I had sampled the signal. Okay, so this is sampling mode. Uh, the good thing about the DSP is that we are not going to see the circuitry of sampler. A sampler is going to give a values like this. So this is 1.2, this is 2.3, this is 3.1 and so on. Whereas there is something called quantization level. Where we decide what will be the actual division of the number. So we are not going to take 1.2, we are going to take 1. Here we are not going to take 2, 2.3 we are going to take 2, here we are not going to take 3, we are 3.1 we are going to take 3. So instead of having 3.1 we are going to convert that to 3. Instead of having 2.3 we are going to convert that to 2 and instead of having 1.2 we are going to convert that to 1. If I have any sample with value of 1.8, I am going to convert that to 2. And this is called as quantization. And the label in which we are defining that conversion is known as quantization labels. And you are seeing that a quantization and quantization error means actual number is 3.1 instead of that I am writing 3 and this point 1 is a quantization error. This point 3 is a quantization error. This point 2 is a quantization error. And once we return in 1, 2 and 3 
we can convert this in ones and the zeros. For that, we can use the encoder. To do that, you had seen the circuitry like R to R ladder. But for each and every circuitry, if, we, if you are giving any input to get an output, it requires some time. If the circuitry is converting this 1.2, it is input is given as 1.2 and it is converting it. Meantime, the level of signal will change. Suppose it went to say 1.6. So what should happen? There will not be any problem between 1.2 to 1.4, right? Even 1.5. It won't be any problem but suppose if it reached to 1.6 so our next level has to be 2 but we are converting this 1.2 as 1 but now it should convert 2 so instead of converting 1 it will rush to 2 and this will be continuous process what should ideally happen that it should wait till it will convert this 1.2 so it should hold this level 1.2 level for some time and then it should go to the say 2.3 and so on and therefore we use a hold circuit this hold circuit holds the level and after that, we use encoder. And then we will get the numbers in ones and the zeros. And this is our digital output or a digital signal. Here, we will give a continuous time. continuous time signal will be given here a discrete time signal will be given right and the output of this encoder will be a digital signal so i hope that it is clear to you what is the continuous time what is a discrete time and what is a digital signal so remember a discrete time signal is not a digital signal so there is a difference so this is the circuitry okay simple circuitry we give the analog signal the sampler now this sampler will have sample and hold circuit whatever the signal coming out of this sampler and hold circuit will be given values according to their quantization level then there will be a coder and this will be output will be digital signal. We'll stop for today. Thank you.